I think what's interesting about this idea of music being a conversation and needing to really, like you said, be right on the edge, or as I would say, right on the ball, you need to be like right, right there, super hyper focused, but also in the moment. It's a very meditative place to be, right? Because it's sort of like you need to be able to be in the moment, sometimes audiating, so hearing the notes you're going to play before you play them, but also at the same time, not trying to project or direct the music but trying to go with the global team flow of what's happening. And I think what's really interesting is to look at that context within different genres. So like if we look at a jazz trio versus a blues trio, we're still going to see that conversation happen, but in a different way. There is, a, say, like in a blues genre, there's a standard sound and there's a standard feeling yes. and a standard form. Everything about it is you don't jump outside of that. And I've actually experienced jumping outside of that. And the musicians started walking off the stage. And I don't blame them because that was not the form that they're uh, subscribed to on stage there and what they love and all that. So who's this guy thinking he can come in here and just make a noise, you know? Martin Banks, who was my neighbor in Austin, a great trumpet player who played with everybody, he said, the blues is not a scale, it's a feeling, mm. right? And we've had discussions about that, and it's both. You know, you don't play the blues on a C scale. You know, you can't do it. It doesn't sound any good. <laughs> so you have to have the, the notes under your fingers, and then it's all feeling after that. When we're playing jazz, it's a three-person conversation. While someone may solo at a given time, there may be a band leader who we're going to follow for form and, you know, we're going to take emotional cues from them, this, that, and the other. There's a little bit more of an equality feeling in terms of your voice being heard when you're playing jazz. It's really the sum of all the parts. Whereas if you watch a great guitar player like Buddy Guy, for example, take a solo and you watch his band. The band is entirely focused on Buddy, and as he brings the solo up, the entire band mirrors that and crescendos up with him, and when he brings the solo back and drops it back, the whole band drops it back. So the musical conversation happens. It's just, it's a different conversation using a different language. You know, you're not going to cover up or answer anything that he's doing. You're just really supporting him, you know? Yeah, exactly. Whereas in a trio of jazz... We say you consider like your equal members, like say how you would play when you're alone would be one thing. But then when you have the drums and the bass there giving you ideas, uh, then you can play how you play and they make you feel comfortable and you make them feel comfortable. You don't cover the bass player up. You don't outsmart the drummer with rhythms. You allow the drummer to feed your rhythms and you allow the bass player to direct you. He's really leaning in a certain direction. You go there with him, you know, and really support it. 